right, let's give this a try. So as you might be able to tell, I'm in my bathroom and I have a ring light, which you can see in the shower door reflection. This whole YouTube journey thing is a learning experience. Um, I also got a wireless microphone in today. So I don't know if it's working or not. We're going to find out. All of this is brand new to me. I've never done any of this before. I did have a little ring light accessory for my phone eons ago for like taking selfies, but I've never done like a video setup. So um, this is all, this is all new. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about aside from like new accessory things, and these were all pretty cheap on Amazon. I don't want to invest a whole lot until I know what I'm doing and until I know that it's like making a difference and it's worth it to invest the money, right? So one of the reasons that I wanted to start a YouTube channel um, was that I was listening to a podcast and um, I can't even remember the name of the podcast now. I'm going to have to go look it up and maybe I'll put it in like the comments in the first comment section. Um, but they were talking about how the media is falling apart. Like nobody wants to go see movies anymore. Nobody wants to watch TV anymore. And all of it's because most of media today is trash. Um, so like they've been, they, they, the proverbial they, right? So anyways, um, they were talking, these people in the podcast, these pastors in the podcast, were talking about how Christian media has been kind of like, eh, just so-so in the past several decades. And suddenly it's gotten much better. So I just went, my son just went and um, he took me to see Sound of Freedom. He's 15. By the way, take your teenagers to see Sound of Freedom if you haven't yet, because it's incredible. Um, take tissues, you'll need them. So anyways, he took me to see Sound of Freedom and I was blown away. It was hands down the best movie I have seen in years, years. And I'm talking like it ranks above Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, <laughs> like it's really that good. Um, subject matter is intense. It's not graphic. I would definitely take my teen to see it again. I don't regret him coming with me. In fact, I'm glad that he did. Um, I'm glad that that's the thing that he wanted to take me to see. So anyways, all that aside, um, why is that about to peak 100 million box office and its budget was like a paltry 19 million? When like, if you look at Indiana Jones or Mission Impossible, they're not even getting close to that um, level of profit on those huge blockbuster movies. And it's because those aren't even, those aren't new concepts. They're, there's nothing new, right? So all Hollywood is producing is trash and it's trash that we don't even want to see. Like there used to be a point in time where we would go see the trash because it was like, at least it was entertaining trash, but the trash isn't even entertaining anymore. So, um, like we went and saw Nefarious. It was incredible. And they did that on a shoestring budget. So what this podcast was about was about how Christian media is getting better. Um, and how, if you look at content creation or the type of art forms that are being created, you have people who are creating poor content. Um, you have people that are creating mediocre content. You have people that are creating good content and you have people that are creating excellent content and Hollywood and the media, like the mass media right now, the big media conglomerate media is creating poor content that nobody wants to see. And they're, they're just dumping resources into it, thinking that if they just spend more money, you'll go see it. But the truth is we're not going to go see it. I'm not supporting those companies anymore. I hate their agendas that they're putting out. I can't stand the repetition of the movies that they're putting out. Even if I could get past the content, I, I don't even want to support the, the horrible live action Disney garbage that's out. It's not even good. Like it would be different if it were a bad agenda, but good content, but it's a bad agenda and bad content bad acting, bad graphics, bad storylines, bad plot lines. It's, it's all bad. <laughs> so like one of the pastors was talking about how Christian content, especially like content coming out of like Angel Studios or um, Steve Dace's studios, it's getting better. And it's getting to the point where that content is actually getting better than the big blockbuster Hollywood studios content. And that isn't possible unless there are Christian artists out there 
creating mediocre content. And so he, they were talking about like the response to having no Christian content is not to withdraw out of the arena of content creation, which if I'm being honest, that was kind of my initial reaction. That's why I quit social media. Um, well, that's one of the reasons that I quit social media. I can't stand the content that's shoved in my face when I'm on platforms that don't actually allow me to choose what I want to see, i.e. Facebook, i.e. Instagram. Those platforms are now putting agenda ads, political, sexual, nasty, nasty ads that I don't want to see in my face. And I, I don't even, I don't have a choice. Even if I scroll past it, I still saw it. I still had that instant, like that instant where that nasty picture was in my head and now I can't get it out of my head. And that's the point. The, the, those content that those content drivers are made that way on purpose. They're made that way to get you addicted to seeing and your children, by the way, um, shameless plug. Don't give your kids devices. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. Don't care. You cannot, you cannot tell me that it's redeemable because it's not. Don't do it. Don't give your children those devices. Um, anyways, so, but those, those little blips are meant to embed themselves in your consciousness and to get you addicted to seeing those little blips. Even if they make you irate, they still elicit a response from you. And that's what the, that's what the, the social media companies want. They want you to respond to it. So it didn't matter. I spent a whole year hiding filthy um, underwear ads, filthy bikini ads, filthy trans ads, filthy, all just filth. I spent a year hiding filth in my social media so that I wouldn't see it. And it wouldn't matter because just every once in a while, like a little slot machine, it would pop back up in my feed. And I had no control over it. I had no way to get rid of it. And I had no way to even submit feedback saying, I don't want to see this filth in my feed anymore. So um, my solution was get off the internet, which, I mean, it served a purpose, right? It did, it did its job. I'm no longer on Facebook and I'm no longer on Instagram. They're not getting my ad, revi ad revenue. I'm not, on, I'm not in their matrix anymore. However... What that did is it took a strong Christian voice off those platforms. So I have an addiction to social media um, and I'm going to call it. Oh, no, uh, you know, what? I don't like that. I don't like that term. First of all, it's not it's not addiction because I'm freed from it. So it's not mm, that's not what it is. So anyways, babbling aside, rambling aside, um, I don't want to be on those platforms. They don't inspire good in me. They don't make me. They don't facilitate me to do good things, right? And they don't facilitate me to even share the gospel. They don't facilitate me to share Christian values. What they do is they drive me deeper into different vices that I don't need to be partaking in and that I've become convicted that I don't need to be partaking in. So being off those platforms, good for me. I'm not saying that's what you need to do. So anyways, the whole, the whole point of this, aside from testing out this new equipment, is to um, say that one of the reasons that I wanted to start a YouTube channel was that when I was listening to this podcast, they were talking about Christian content creators need to be out there creating content. And it's okay if it's mediocre content, as long as it's consistently getting better. Because if it's consistently getting better, you will eventually master it. Maybe not me, maybe I'll never be a master of YouTube, that's fine. Maybe that's not what God put me here for. Um, but I'm just consistently getting a little bit better. I'm spending a little bit more time editing the videos. I'm spending a little bit more time setting up the equipment or I'm spending just a little bit more resources or talent or something to create a little bit better content. Because as we do that, as we envision what we want a Christian world to look like, we don't want it to look like the silly agendas that are out there, right? And that's the stuff that we're sharing. That's the stuff that I keep seeing from my Christian friends and, and um, you know, church members and stuff like, oh, did you see that gross Bud Light guy? Did you see that gross 
cover girl guy with all the makeup. Did you see all that gross stuff? Yeah, I saw it. I don't want to see it. I just don't. I want to be in a world where I don't have to see that because it's gross. It's off-putting. It's disgusting. And I don't want to see it. So how do I counter that? Well, I don't counter that by taking the Christian voice off of the platform. I counter that by putting a common sense, not gross voice on the platform and by creating content that people want to see. Not all people want to see my content, just like I don't want to see the vast majority of what all people are currently putting out on the internet. But I know there are people out there like me who don't want to see that filth. They want to see wholesome Christian content that they can have on in the background and not worry about like some weird agenda getting shoved in their face. They want to see a family that loves each other, that's doing life together. They don't want to see some diversity, equity, inclusion garbage, right? They want to see a family that's been doing life together, that's having a good time, that's that's actually real. That's real. Uh, they don't want to see this, this trash that's currently being shoved in our faces left and right. So all that to say is that I am not, I, I came to the conclusion that I have some skills. Like I'm really good at baking. I'm really good at homemaking and I'm good at homeschool. I'm really good at DIY and decor and things like that. And there's a market for that. And not like, uh, not that I'm going to make any money off of this because I'm not going to, <laughs> let's be honest. And that's not even what I'm doing it for. But there are people out there that are watching this that want to see this, that want to see good, wholesome, biblically solid content that's not full of some dude wearing makeup agenda stuff. And we're not going to get that if we're deleting ourselves off of the platforms. Now, if I get canceled, I get canceled. That just happens. If a video gets demonetized or taken down because YouTube doesn't like what I have to say, then that happens. I'll start a new channel. <laughs> I'll refuse to go away. So I think like this is different. So he was talking about um, when I, when I find the link for that podcast, you should give it a listen because it was very insightful. Um, the guy who made, um, Lore TV, L O O R TV. Uh, what's his name? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Was saying that if you're not on the platform, you don't exist. Like if you're not on social media, you just don't exist. Your voice doesn't matter because you're not out there interacting in the public square the same way that everyone is interacting in the public square. And to some degree, that's true because I'm not on Facebook, so I'm not interacting there. I don't even know what's going on most of the time when somebody's like, oh, did you see what so-and-so posted? No, I didn't. And actually, I'm kind of glad about it. But this is a different platform. So this is more about a visual um, a content. And um, the way that I use YouTube, which I talked about this in my first video, is that I, I'm seeking content creators that are like me. So what I want to do is I want to build a community of content creators that are like me. I want to build a community of people that are Christian, preferably reformed, but I'll, at this point I'll settle for any Christians, um, who want wholesome content and who don't want to have to filter whatever it is through a filth lens, right? I just, ugh, ugh, it makes my skin crawl. Anyways, so all that to say that I hope this test is going well and that I hope that explains why I wanted to start a YouTube channel. So. Looking for some content ideas. What do you guys want to see? What should I be doing? Um, I'm going to be doing some more sourdough videos. And like, I'm going to apologize for the quality of whatever I'm putting out there right now because it's going to be poor. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm hoping to get to mediocre soon. And I hope that you'll join me. All right. Have a good day. Bye.